My friend who recently became an American citizen is all about celebrating these different American pastimes. And my friend Matthew Marsden joins us. He might, you might, some of you might know, a lot of you who like action movies or good movies and people who aren't, you know, annoyingly anti-science and illiberal uh, might actually know who he is. He's been, been in Rambo. He's been in Black Hawk Down. He's been in all the movies I've seen. Resident Evil. And he has a lovely family. He's a Texas resident now. He came from California, not to California, our Texas, but to further Texas, our Texas. And he joins us now. Matthew, good to see you. Uh, good to see you too, Dana. It's good to talk with you, Just You know, you're just literally down the road. We're, we're each from our own little respective, our own little respective studios. But you have your movie posters there. Welcome to, uh, I never actually welcomed you publicly and said, oh, welcome to you. Texas. Well, well, I have to tell I have to tell people that um, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit now about how you cooked me and my children cookies. Oh. You know this 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 evil person that is you know the evil gun woman like spent two days cooking me the most delicious cookies. By the way, it kind of like completely uh, demolishes that kind of. Oh, right? and it was it was actually based on a British recipe too, which I thought was fun. Oh, and then I had edible go. glitter because you know the kids they like the edible. They were like the marshmallow fluff, like whoopy like pies, and yeah, they're great cookies. They were they were good. I ate some too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, but I have to say, you come in and you drop the sugar and leave. And yeah. like my kids were like, whoa, they're around the house. They were like, okay, sorry about bye. that. Bye. Dropping the bomb. I say I didn't give them puppies though. I at least stopped. I was I didn't give them sugar and a puppy. So <laughs> I, I, I I stopped there. You I was reading some of the stuff that you had online. You have now discovered this amazing phenomenon that we call Friday Night Lights, and I loved yeah. the way that you were talking about this because your dad, you've got kids in sports, and I loved how you were experiencing this because it really is. And in Texas. People can play football in other states, but it's like when you come to Texas, it's a whole other level. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And look, I mean, look, it, it literally gives me goosebumps just talking about it because, you know, as you know, I grew up loving America. And, um, you know, before I moved to America, I lived in California. So when I finally moved to America, it was uh, it was quite something to experience that. Fr I'd heard about it. I'd heard about this Friday Night Lights. I'd I'd heard about this experience and actually some of my friends said to me, listen, you know, this is really something quite special. And to go there and to see my son, you know, put on the pads and go out there and play football. And it was really a moment for me. Like it really genuinely was a moment for me. I'm like, this is real America and I love it. It's everything that I wanted it to be. Now I got to ask you, like, how far do you go? Because, you know, some of the parents, they got the cowbells. Maybe, you know, some some of the moms they get, you know, that I mean, it just all depends. Like on a scale of one to ten, do you like paint your face and have a giant cowbell and and like <laughs> other noise effects? Or are you a little bit more, you know, low key? You know, Dana, we need more cowbell. <laughs> uh, I know I haven't quite got there yet. Like, you know, I am British, so I'm kind of like, you know, this is kind of like rather good. Oh, he hits the... Uh, that's kind of wonderful, you know. Uh, uh, you know, the, the one thing that I love about it, that I really love about it, it's unabashedly masculine. Yes. You know, it really is unabashedly masculine. And these guys are hitting each other, like, super hard. And then you bet you see them bend down and pick the other guy up. And it, it's one of those things where, you know, I mean, we know a lot of guys that are in the, the special operations community and in the Army and all that. And they talk a lot talk about, you know, that experience about playing football when they were kids and, and how it makes them be men, you know, and it really does. Yeah. And, and it also, you know, the other thing that I saw here as well, doesn't matter if you're white, doesn't it matter if you're black, doesn't matter if you're Hispanic, it's like all that is gone. It doesn't matter. So um, I think that Friday Night Lights, if, if you took someone from the bluest, bluest, like most liberal part of, of, you know, New York or California and brought them here and showed them Friday Night, night Lights, it's just the best of everything that is American and it just dispels a lot of this rubbish that people, you know, spout mm. about the South. It's yeah. just utter garbage. No, it is. And and we're and we're glad that you're loving it. We're talking to Matthew Marsden, actor, he's been in Rambo, Black Hawk Down, Resident Evil, I mean, and he's lover of whiskey and all things military. You can find him on social media as well. So now that you're in Texas, a couple of things we got to hit now. I, 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 I guess it makes you part of the American Taliban because after the Heartbeat Act was passed, um, we were, to I, I just thought if I was going to be 
called a member of the American Taliban, I would I would have a Blackhawk, Matthew, that I would have a Blackhawk helicopter <laughs> and I would have like some of this gear. Like, where's my gear? Like, where do you, I'm, do you have your chopper yet? Yeah. I don't have my chopper yet. I was a little bit disappointed, actually, because, you know, I, I figured at least, like, I, I don't need the full $88 billion in gear. I just need a little fraction of that, you know what I mean? It's okay I if it's not movie quality. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. That's okay. No, I mean, this is just the ridiculousness of, of the way that people act. Now, I have to tell you, when I was in California, this was one of the things that kind of needled me a little bit. When I was in California, I used to say, look, look I don't want people telling my kids, mm-hmm. right, that I don't want teaching them in school about sex, right? I don't want that. That should be something reserved for the parents. And the first thing someone said to me, I said it on Twitter, and they were like, move. Leave California and go. And so I was like, okay, I will. So there's there's a quite simple um, resolution to this yeah. issue. You don't like it, leave. You don't have to live in Now, I had to move. I, I, Lots of friends over there, really good people. And I moved to Texas because this is the way of life that I want. And quite simply, they don't have to live here. Mm-hmm. Not, no one's holding a gun to their head uh, and telling them that they should be here. So don't come. Yeah. It's okay. Leave. You don't have to come here. It's really simple. It's a great thing about America. You can move wherever you want. Yeah, see, you can. people can go. They don't have to come and complain and try to change everything. Talking to our friend Matthew Marsden, you can also find him at MatthewMarsden.com. Um, this you've you've been tweeting about the coronavirus there's been some different approaches between the countries about coronavirus obviously and one of the things that we've been dealing with here we had soundbite that we were playing earlier of anthony fauci saying oh well misinformation or this disinformation is the enemy of public health and i'm thinking this guy's like the biggest purve- purveyor of this and there's a lot of, I think, judgment that's been thrown at people who want to stay unvaccinated or, or people who have questions, they're vaccine hesitant. And then, of course, a lot of discussion about ivermectin. And I know you and my husband, who are really good friends, you guys were talking about this. And that's why I was like, we got to bring Matthew on because it is. And this is when my husband talks about you and he'll, he'll tell me stuff that that things funny that you say. He always does your accent. So I'm going to try to do it, which is good. Don't be offended. I'm going to try it. He'll, be, <laughs> okay. he'll go. But Chris. They give the horses ivermectin. Uh, so people can't have ivermectin because it's for horses. That's their reasoning. I don't know if, you, if that's good or bad, but Anne scene. That's, that's pretty good. It's as close to acting as I'm ever going to get. I'm horrible. But yeah. there is, you're, you're, he's like secretly, I'm so offended. I'm going back to California now. <laughs> no, but it's tr- like, I, that's, there are a lot of things. There are a lot of medicines and things like that in different amounts that are used in conjunction with different things that I think are kind of interspecies. So that seems to be a really bad argument. But I wanted to get your your take on this because it's like they're trying to shame people who are looking simply for therapeutic options and there's nothing wrong with that. They're trying to shame them as being like these backwoods hillbillies. That's where that one story came from where they quoted some Oklahoma doctor who apparently it was the whole story was a lie about rural hospitals teeming with with these backwoods hillbillies that are treating themselves with ivermectin. Well, that never happened. And the audio soundbite that we played coming into it was this what fact checker Kane? Yep. This this guy who was saying, "Well, it wasn't entirely right, but the Republicans pounced on it, Matthew. Shame on them but it's they were but yeah. it was because pe- people were being shamed with that yeah no there's no the, the the odd thing is is that what happens is people will lie about something i mean i don't know if you've noticed this over the past few years but people will lie about something and continue to lie and lie and lie and double down and double down and double down and when they find out that actually the lie is a real lie like there's nowhere else to go they go oh squirrel right let's look over there like Nobody goes, hey, listen, are you guys taking amoxicillin? Like, fish right. take amoxicillin. You know, are you a fish? I mean, it's like, it's so stupid. Like I say, idiots, I had oh, that some idiots have oatmeal this morning. Don't they know that horses eat oats? Duh. Stupid fish. I mean, it's, that's like a really good, I have to say, it's a really great, not to interrupt you, it's a really good California accent. That's really good. Well, well, but that's what they're like. It's so stupid. And, and, and the same thing with this, with, with this anti-vax. The left has commandeered language, right? Mm. And it's, it's genius on their side, right? And we really have, have, have done a very bad, I mean, when I say we, I mean, it's anyone that's saying, right? Like, what does anti-vax mean? It's kind of like anti-climate. 
what does that mean? I don't, I, I don't like the climate. Like, whatever it is, I don't like it. Like, yeah. I'm an anti-vax. And, and what's really offensive about this thing, the anti-vax, is the complete, like, um, branding of someone. Right? Oh, you're anti-vax. Well, I've taken all my vaccines. Right? Even people that have taken the vaccine, the coronavirus vaccine, and say, mm, I don't want to force other people to do it. They're anti-vax. I mean, this is a complete departure from any kind of logic and sense at all. Yeah. And you can't say it. And then what they do is they smear you. Like, the best thing for me is like, oh, uh, you're an actor. I'm like, okay, so uh, my car's broken down. Can I not say my car's broken down because I'm not a mechanic? Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's all about con- yeah, it's all about controlling the language, and you've had to deal with this too, just because you've had to go back and forth with work, and you've been filming, you know, certain projects. You've had to, I know that you were overseas even filming projects, and everything is so everything is so sensitive. It it everyone, no matter what industry you're in, it's like everyone's language is so policed because you have these these the the far left, which is completely as you said, commandeered language, police's language. And if you get one thing, it's all semantics. If you get one thing wrong, if you just say, well, I'm a little hesitant. Oh, well, then you want everyone to die then because you're going to kill everyone like a serial killer because you're hesitant about vaccines because you have unanswered questions. That's fine. Whatever murderer. That's kind of how it's, there's no discussion. It's it's incredibly illiberal. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the, the whole the whole hypocrisy of it and the, the illogical nature of it. And the funny thing is they're like, you know, what do you know about ivermectin? You're not a doctor. And I'm like, well, hold on a minute. You're not a doctor either. So yeah. why are you telling me? Like, how can you tell me? And by the way, well, what do you know? I'm like, I had COVID. And, and I think that the thing that, that the greatest thing to have happened, and thank God he's okay, is what happened to Joe Rogan. Because people literally lost their minds over the fact that he beat it. He beat him. Oh, well, he's a millionaire. That he, you know, uh, and, and that was the thing. They said he took a uh, uh, horse drug again. Yeah, ivermectin. I mean, what, whatever happened to saying, thank God he's okay. Right, thank God he took this and he didn't need to do that. I mean, we should be saying this is the greatest thing ever because there's alternatives for people that cannot take. Like, you know when people say, the devil's in the details, right? Mm. When say, oh, there are unvaccinated, they're in hospital. How many of the, the unvaccinated in the hospital cannot be vaccinated, Dana? How many of them cannot take that That's vaccine because it poses a risk there? But they don't talk about that. So with something like what happened with Joe, and, and then they'll say, well, he was hit and fell. He was fit and healthy anyway. He was fit and healthy, so we should have... Well, hang on a minute. If he's fit and healthy and he was going to recover... Why do we need vaccines in the first place if, if you're fit and healthy and you're going to recover? Like, there's no logical through line. I think that's what's really frustrating people is that, that and Fauci, if I was him, I would kind of, I, I don't know where I'd go. I know that Texas is a very, very big place. I've driven across it. But wow, you you've actually driven across the state. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, drove, I drove here. That's, that's right. one way. I, I, I did this whole thing when I drove out here today and I was driving with my wife and I was like, Oh, this place is so overpopulated. Look, and I've taken it, and there's just nothing. <laughs> Ten hours, like nothing. But but would you even show your face ever right. if you said what he said? I mean, this guy is the biggest narcissist that you've ever seen. He was like, uh, he was he was anti mask before. He's healthcare. He was Remember, he's healthcare. That's oh, what he said. He, He's the face of it, right? I mean, and nobody said, you know, you know that he just said something recently where they did a they did a, a clinical test in Africa on HIV on this HIV drug. I, I saw this the other day. They did a clinical test on it, and it failed, right? But nobody talks about the things that he does that are failing, mm. which is everything. Or the right, funding of the, the lab as well, that there's also that. We're talking with Matthew Marsden. We're running out of time right now, but Matthew, we want to have you back because it's fun to talk with you, and, and there's so much to discuss as well. So we're not going to let you go till you commit to that. Commit I'm to committed. it. Okay, he's committed. Uh, my, my fee, I don't know. My fee is one of those little cookie things that you made that was delicious. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, do, some, we'll do some more with the edible glitter, the edible glitter as well. I mean, you got to have that. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm yeah, from yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> I'll have that all day. Matthew Marsden, you can find oh, him on wow. Twitter, Matthew D. Marsden. You can also find him at MatthewMarsden.com. Always good to see you, my friend. Take care. We'll talk again soon. God Bye-bye. bless.